Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania is the 310th installment of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, starring Paul Rudd, Kate from Lost, Gordon Gecko, and Catwoman. In the film, our intrepid heroes explore the quantum realm and face off against the guy from the most boring episode of Loki. I'm not going to stand here and tell you whether you should or should not shell out the money for a movie ticket, but what I can tell you is that if you are looking for a free alternative, allow me to suggest the smash hit straight out of Scandinavia. 2013's Ant Boy. It's half as long, twice as earnest, and seeks to answer the elusive question, what happens if you attempt to remake Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, but free of violence or any visual trademarks owned by Marvel? You see, while most YouTubers will happily give you their half-baked takes about the latest cinematic hits, I'm not like the other channels. I'm out here combing through obscure foreign films with dubious production values in the hopes of glimpsing greatness. Greatness like Ant Boy, a movie so great it became the 29th highest grossing film of Denmark in 2013. A movie so great that it almost made millions of dollars. Almost. So Ant Boy tells the story of Pele, an awkward young boy who becomes the next great insect superhero. The first few minutes are your typical coming of age fluff. Pele is the class nobody, totally unremarkable. No friends, no talents, no prospects for the future. I'm nothing special. I'm just Pele, a tiny ant in a giant anthill. Brutal. That's great. Okay, what's your name? Pele? Pale? Okay, super. Pale. Yeah, whatever. Next, please. Next in line. So when I first started watching this, I thought the tracking was off on my TV. I was like, what is wrong with the audio? It isn't synced at all. That's great. Yeah, 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 that's great. Wow. Then I eventually realized this movie is not in English. I was watching a dubbed version, but because the movie has this like huge voiceover monologue at the start, I was lulled into a false sense of security. So as Pele's school day starts, we're introduced to the important characters, two twin girl classmates. One is the prim, pretty, and proper type that our boy Pele is obsessed with. And the other is a punk rock rebel. The girls have a super rich dad who owns some kind of pharmaceutical company. We'll call it Oscorp for no reason in particular. So even though Pele is basically invisible to prim and proper, we find out that he's got a heart of gold. He rescues a nerdy kid from getting beat up by school bullies. Then there's a chase scene where he's gotta get away from them. It's all actually remarkably well shot, if a little cheesy. So he hops into the backyard of a spooky house to hide from Tweedledee and Tweedledum. And while he's huddled up waiting for the coast to clear, a super special ant crawls up his leg, bites him on the neck, and he passes out. Stop me if you know where this is going. Pele eventually wakes up, makes his way home, and during the night, sleep eats all the sugar in the house, like the greedy little ant boy that he is. <laughs> Wakes up the next morning, and what do you know? He's got superpowers. His hands stick to stuff. Father, can you help me? Plus, he's got super strength. What happened? Please don't tell me that's the last of the juice. Oh, come on. No parents in the universe would react that way. I'm also pretty sure that the dad's delivery here was supposed to be deadpan, but the dude doing the English dub had like no idea. After watching this movie, I sincerely doubt that the voice actors even watched the movie while they were looping it. If you watch it in full, you'll know what I mean. So Pele goes to school, he walks into gym class, and I guess they're on their armed combat unit. I learned this exercise in the army. I was a machine. No one could stop me, no one could get at me. No one is one against me to this day. This scene would have been so much better if they had had the dude who played Kip do the dubbing. Try and hit me, Napoleon. What? I said come down here and see what happens if you try and hit me. The teacher picks Pele to do a fight demonstration with... Come on, Pele. Give it your best shot, Pele. <laughs> Okay, I kind of love this movie. Pele's fight or flight response gets triggered and with his newfound abilities, he makes short work of the instructor. <laughs> the 
the nerd kid from early Earth and deduces that Pele has superpowers and decides to take him under his wing and help train him to become a legitimate crime fighter. Together, they experiment and figure out that besides his super strength and super stickiness, Pele has super smell, super strong bite, and super acid, uh, powers. Yeah, we'll go with that. Nerd Kid then goes online and orders a bunch of different generic superhero costumes and starts kit bashing them together. By the way, I love that he's constantly reading comic books that are just called Hero, which is the kind of thing you do in a low budget movie when you don't have enough money to pay a licensing fee. Same thing for the music, by the way. The credits note that the movie features generic pop song and generic rock song. <laughs> I love it. After some work, they put together a super suit and we're off to the races. Who are you? I am Ant Boy. Now, with a way to hide his identity, Ant Boy works up his clout by going around town and catching bad guys. The school falls in love with the mysterious hero, but our boy Pele's still a nobody. Something something superhero angst, why can't I be popular like my alternate identity? You all know where this is going. A baddie shows up and kidnaps Prim Pretty Proper, and Rocker Girl enlists the help of the boy Wonder to get her back. The villain... <laughs> The villain? So the villain has it out for their rich daddy, the head of Oscorp. He's called the Flea, and he like, drinks blood or whatever. My dad received this video this morning. Summer's dead. I have your beautiful young daughter. I'm the Flea, and just like the insects, I'm impossible to get rid of. <laughs> I love that the bad guy calls him Summer's dad in the Ransom video. <laughs> like, the writers didn't even want to give the dad a name. You have 48 hours, Summer's dead. Spend them wisely if you want to see your daughter again. So Pele, Nerd Kid, and Rocker Girl bike through town, and using his super smell powers, our boy tracks Prim Pretty Proper to the Flea's hideout. Which I have to admit is actually a pretty cool looking set. But oh no, it's a trap, and Ant Boy gets captured. So it turns out that the Flea is a former scientist at Oscorp, and he made some sort of like super serum that cured diseases or something, but Summer's dad gave him the shaft before it could be fully distributed. It's all explained in this handy dandy expository comic book sequence. The flea flees just as the police arrive, Ant Boy and Summer are rescued and dejected, Pele considers calling it quits. This all culminates in a final battle beginning at the school where our hero overcomes his fears, chases the baddie to a spooky forest, and there the face-off commences. Yeah, that's the fight. With the day saved, Pele decides that he doesn't actually like Prim Pretty Proper after all, and he's gonna stick with crime fighting for a little while longer. And thus the legend of Ant Boy begins. That's the movie. It's fine. I was surprised at how good the cinematography was for such a low budget affair. There are some really great shots. The final battle has this like great opener that I don't want to spoil that I actually thought was a great workaround for shooting an epic fight scene with the restraints that the production team probably had on the location. The lighting in this movie in particular really stood out to me. It was great. It's a tight 75. So even though the movie is basically a trope fest, you're never going to get bored. The story keeps moving along at a solid clip. If you're gonna watch it, try out the original Danish, maybe? Like, the English dubbing is just so bad. Most of you know that I'm working on a budget superhero movie of my own right now, so I'm trying to study the genre from all angles. I must say that this picture, it has given me some stuff to think about. More so than if I had watched that other movie, I greatly suspect. So, thank you, and boy, I eagerly look forward to your inevitable sequel. Oh, okay, so I just looked it up. There actually is one. Oh, even better, they made two. It's a trilogy. There is an Ant Boy trilogy. This is great news. 
Squarespace sponsored this video. Do you have an idea for a website? Some creation that you'd like seen? Then you should make it with Squarespace. They've got everything you need to get started, pick from one of their stunning templates, and then customize it in the way that works for you. Maybe you've got this awesome idea for a podcast, but you'd rather not deal with the annoying nitty-gritty of getting it online. If so, their Audioblocks feature is just for you. If you want to build a place for a community, try their Member Areas feature. Even if you've got something that you want to sell, they can help you set up an online storefront. You can get a free trial at squarespace.com. Give it a shot. Then, when you're ready to launch your site in full, head over to squarespace.com slash austinmcconnell to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.